and welcome to the Comfort Connections podcast. In this episode, Fostering Positive Aging, Best Practices for Aging Services Professionals, we are joined by Steve Gurney, founder of the Positive Aging Community. Listen in as we discuss the importance of communication, collaboration, and resource development to promote a successful aging journey. We will dive into the concept of positive aging and how aging services professionals can leverage resources and connections to provide clients with community and successful care. Stay tuned for expert insights and practical tips to elevate your practice in serving aging populations. Welcome, Steve. It's a pleasure to have you joining us today. I'm really psyched to be here and looking forward to this conversation. Steve, can you please share a little about your background with our listeners and a brief overview of the Positive Aging Community, the Positive Aging Sourcebook? Absolutely. Well, I kind of fell into this career by accident. My, when I was in college, my grandfather needed a nursing home, and I observed what my family had to go through to make that difficult decision. And it kind of blew my mind that there wasn't a resource out there for our family to make this difficult decision. So when I graduated, I didn't have the greatest job in the world. And I basically figured, well, I'm going to put together one of these guides and I'll put it on my resume and uh, maybe somebody will give me a better job. Well, here I am 35 years later. I uh, That was what's now known as the Positive Aging Source Book. And then um, I discovered something really interesting when I started doing this is is that in general, consumers are really not interested in all this aging and senior living stuff. So the phrase that I hear every day of the week is, I'm not ready yet. This is all good, but I'm not ready for that yet. Whereas the professional community, the social workers, financial planners, area agencies on aging, they were ordering my guide by the box loads. And I quickly discovered that what I'm going to do is build a community of senior living providers, and that can help provide access to these very difficult to reach consumers in this area. Well, everything went great. You know, and I would do uh, what part of what I did to build that community is I do a lot of live events and things of that nature. But then um, uh, the pandemic hits. And all these providers are giving me a call saying, what are we going to do? We can't meet in person. So I started experimenting with online ways for the provider community to meet online. And um, then something interesting happened. These professionals started inviting their clients to these online discussions we were having. And that's where we rebranded the organization to the positive aging community, because now we have these, in addition to still publishing the source book, we have these amazing live and interactive online discussions with older adults, families, and professionals, and we're all together. So I know that's a long-winded uh, response there, but hopefully that gives your listeners a little bit of a, a glimpse at, at who I am and and how I got into this field. Thank you, Steve, for sharing how the positive aging community began. So diving a little deeper into the idea of positive aging, could you expand on what this term means, especially when aging services professionals are using it? All right. Well, uh, so first off, um, the interesting thing about positive aging and the reason that I like that term is, number one, it's it's positive. You know, it's sort of where in general, when we look at aging, a lot of us subconsciously, it's a declinist way of thinking. It's like, oh, you know, I'm not as good as I used to be, but you know, positive aging, it gives that positive vibe. But, but here's something that I want to make sure that the professional community and the community at large really thinks a little bit more deeply about is, is that I think oftentimes when we think of positive aging, you imagine this guy that's jumping out of an airplane in his 80s or 90s or somebody that's running a marathon, you know, with their grandchildren. And and that's how we view 
positive aging is the in general it's these sort of healthy physical feats but how i want uh the community to look at positive aging is is that none of us have a crystal ball and for most of us we're not going to be jumping out of airplanes and running marathons and life throws us curveballs so a, a positive aging activity could be having a discussion with your kids and grandkids about end of life decision making um a positive aging uh approach could be oh gosh i got this diagnosis that i had a stroke and or that i'm going to be using a walker or a wheelchair how can i reinvent myself to live a purposeful life and so i think when i think about positive aging I try to sort of help people see a wider field of vision that it's it, that every aspect of us living as we're aging and going through these chapters can be positive. It's not easy, but having a wider field of vision, some creativity, some encouragement and people to help you can make it possible. This really makes sense, especially living a purposeful life it sounds like the big takeaway is that positive aging includes having access to the right information and support to lead to a good quality of life. Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the things that I've seen over the years is, is that uh, people feel like, so when we are faced with decisions that are related to senior living, elder care, what have you, Oftentimes we keep it inside. It's like, this is a family matter. I'm going to, I'm going to figure out what's best for mom and dad. And, um, and I can do it. Y you know, they raised me. I'm going to, I'm going to help them. And, and folks don't really open up and sort of share what they're going through. And number one, that can be stressful, but more importantly, if folks are not letting us know that, their situation, it, it makes it difficult for us as providers to help them. And I think the key thing that I see when I, you know, meet somebody who's new to this field, uh, or has been in this field for quite some time, it's sort of advising them on learn about all the resources out there and really seek to be a resource to those families that you're talking and individuals that you're talking to because they are walking this road alone. They think that, that they have to walk it alone and we can all help them. Can you share a little more regarding how aging services professionals can leverage resources like the Positive Aging Sourcebook to support clients and caregivers in the aging journey? Yeah, I mean, the the it's great when your individual community has a resource like the one I put together. But, you know, in parts of this country, there might not be necessarily like this comprehensive resource that you can go and grab and just pass that along to your clients. And so I urge all professionals to sort of create your own resource guide. And how you do that, it's up to you. It could be using your company's CRM system. It could be a three ring binder that you just put everything in, or it could be a spreadsheet or something online, but begin to create your own resource directory. And, and one of the things that I've found in this field is, is that oftentimes it might not make sense. It's sort of like, I'm a provider that is in the senior housing space. So why should I be telling people about aging in place? And vice versa. I'm, you know, working in adult daycare. I mean, we're taking care of people who are living in their own home. Why would I want to know about assisted living and nursing care? That's the point. The, the point is, is that the goal is we want to be a resource to the families that are coming to us. And not every family is going to be appropriate to our services, but we, we don't want to just send them out in the cold. We want to help them on that journey, and this will pay off as professionals with tremendous dividends because that family that might not be appropriate for your services 
that you help navigate these very challenging waters, you better believe they're going to be talking highly about you to all their friends, family, and neighbors. And at some point, uh, you're going to get a phone call. You helped my next door neighbor. She spoke really highly of you. And, uh, you know, my dad is ready for uh, some additional services. And I'd, I'd love to learn more about what you're offering. Thank you for sharing your thoughts about ways to create one's own research, resource directory and most importantly, about the resources in their specific community area. So outside of having the proper resources, communication and collaboration are also very important aspects of a positive aging experience. Can you share a few considerations for aging services professionals to address any communication breakdown, especially when looking to support the positive aging experience with an individual or caregiver? All right. Well, uh, here's, I, I, I think I'd mentioned earlier that the phrase that I've heard every day of my career, and I'll hear it for every day until I stop working in this space is, oh, that's really nice, but I'm not ready yet. Um, is the, it's, it's very difficult and it's, uh, some of it has to do with our societal stigmas of what it means to grow older and age, but it's it's very difficult for most people to think that, oh, I can't believe this. I I I am actually looking at assisted livings. I, I said to myself, I'll never move to one of these places, or I can't believe that I need hearing aids or a walker or a wheelchair. All of these little things are because of this ageist pu- bias in our society it makes it very difficult. And so from a communication point of view, oftentimes I tell folks is is that if you are getting resistance, if you're getting, I'm not ready yet, if you're getting, it's like, oh, I'm, mom says she's not going to look into those things. Oftentimes the best solution is kind of address the elephant in the room. It's sort of like, look, I know you probably never imagined that you would be receiving home care services or touring an assisted living community. But let's just pretend that this is not an age segregated uh, decision that you're making here. This is designed so that you can live a more purposeful life. This is just simply a tool that is going to enable you to live a more fulfilled life. And Sometimes we have to be creative on how we have that conversation with families. But what I found is, is that when we have that discussion, that oftentimes, you you know, you can see the posture. It's like, wow, I'm glad you said that because it's hard for us to articulate that that's the problem. And um, and this time it oftentimes works Uh, a a little thing that I do with people that uh, where I get this a lot is, is that an adult family is like taking mom on tours of assisted living communities. And mom's already said, I'm not moving out of this house. Why are you showing me these places? What have you? And oftentimes I'll say, okay, mom, let's pretend it's not an assisted living senior community. Let's pretend that you're touring a college. I want you to pretend you're a college student walking onto campus. What does a college student look at? They look at the other students because they these are people that they're going to hang out with and stuff. And sometimes just that little way of framing this decision, it's like, oh, wow, okay, I get it. And uh, and it enables people to be a little bit more open to receiving the information. You know, Steve, you are so spot on about addressing that elephant in the room. Thank you for sharing these great tips to consider. Now, can you share a success story showcasing how proper communication and access to resources such as the positive aging community helped a client with their care journey? Yeah. um, So I've I've got one story, a little bit anecdotal here, but let me kind of walk you through this. And so, um, and and what's interesting is it kind of ties in what I was just talking about, is, is that this family that I'm thinking about in particular, there were a few siblings uh, I got a call from one of the daughters 
and she's just sort of like you know at wit's end because a um she wanted mom to move to assisted living but i think like her siblings either were thinking well mom can come live in my basement or um you know uh why don't we get home care and mom can just stay in her home that's she said that's where she wants to be and um they were kind of at odds with what to do. And uh, as we began talking, I introduced them to the profession of aging life care managers. And these are these are folks that can be hired to sort of make an evaluation and sort of be like a quarterback to all these difficult decisions. And so the first thing that happened with this family was the aging life care manager came in and basically said, look, even though you all might be paying for me, the client is your mom. We're going to do what's best for your mom and, and what she wants because she's an adult. She can make mistakes. And uh, this is not about what you think is best for you. It's about what mom, what's best for mom. And so they basically, you know, uh, did an assessment and it's like, well, for the time being, Mom is going to stay at home, so let's make this the best experience that it can be. So the first thing that they did that I thought was brilliant was they put together a big community meeting for for mom, meaning family, friends, neighbors, acquaintances, club members, what have you. And it was sort of like, hey, look, um, we want mom to live the most purposeful life and so we're bringing you all together to see how and if you would like to contribute to making her time at home as purposeful as possible and what happened when they did this was nearly everybody raised their hand it's sort of like you know i i have the day off on wednesdays i would love to come by and and we go on some adventures and there i i remember there was there was somebody that was a movie buff. They, he was going to the movies every Saturday by himself. And he's like, I would love to bring you to the movies if you'd like to come with me. And so they got that mom's community engaged. And the beauty to this is that this is all free, unpaid help, you know? And um, it was amazing. But there was gaps in 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 the week. And there was times when you know somebody's going on vacation what are we going to do so they engaged a a home care agency uh you know like like comfort care and they um engaged a home care agency that was on call and there was regular days that they were always there you know but what was great is is that if somebody was going on vacation or if somebody could be there or there's an emergency they could pick up the phone and they knew that that provider would be there and they also still had the aging life care manager that was helping the family coordinate all of this. And, um, you know, I love it when people call me and they, they, they present me with a problem and I kind of, what, but what I really like is when I hear the solution and you, the, the, there's, there is an interesting twist to this story because I believe this, this care model went on for a long time. And, and mom at the beginning, mom was showing early signs of cognitive impairment. That's why the family kind of came together, but that progressed to the point where living safely in the home was becoming a little bit more difficult. And, uh, I, I believe, but I'm not th- that one of the things that, uh, that one of the families had a, uh, 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 like a child in high school that was volunteering at a local memory care community for community service hours. And because that uh, familiar face in the neighborhood was over there, it made it easier now for mom to go there and tour the place. And I believe that like the last year of her life, she lived in a, um, in a memory care community. So, I know this is a long-winded story, but why I like sharing it is, is that I think it it just illustrates how there's there's no I wish 
there was a checklist that we could just check off and said, here's what you do. But it's not that easy. It's um, every family dynamic is different. Every personality is different. And I think the important thing that we need to recognize is that the elders that we're, that we're concerned about have lived long, full lives. You know, they're not like that 18-year-old kid go walking onto a college campus. And we need to honor them and let them make decisions and, and be a part of it. Thank you for sharing this client's journey. How awesome it must have been to have her community providing such great support. And you're right, each has very specific needs. This is what we see so many times for the clients that we serve, especially how Comfort Care helps to provide support and fill those gaps. Um, it, yeah, it, my, my pleasure. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm just blown away at what you all are doing and, uh, it's supporting, we, we need to support people in their journey. And for most of us, that journey is aging in place. I mean, it, even if we know that, okay, if sometime, if the boxes check, if I have cognitive impairment, if. I am in a wheelchair, what have you. I would like to make the move and um, and and move to a community. But it all starts with providing support in the place that we're living today. And uh, and I commend you all on that mission. Steve, as our conversation comes to an end, do you have any additional thoughts that you'd like to share with our listeners? Um, I just. I and I and I hope I illustrated it today is I think as providers and as consumers in this marketplace, having a wide field of vision is very important. It's very easy for us to to sort of think in sort of prescribed regimented ways, uh, and be, whether we went through some training or you know our, my previous five clients. This is what they did, so I'm going to do this this for them. But I really uh, just a reminder to everybody to to listen to the voice of our of the people that we're serving and to whatever ability we have, try to customize the way that we're caring for them uh, based on their preferences. And it's just so exciting to see what happens when we take this approach. And what I've seen over the years is, is that organizations and individuals that take this approach, they often sort of say, gosh, I went into this thinking that I was going to take care of Mr. Jones, but I learned so much from him. He's, you know, fascinating individual. And he helped me make connections in groups and communities that I never imagined that I would be interacting with. There's so much that we can learn from the elders that we're serving. Thank you again, Steve, for sharing your insights with our listeners. Like I said, I know I sound like a broken record. I love what you all are doing and would love to come back anytime to uh, to chat about this and any topic related to aging and longevity. Listeners, to view resources, show notes, and access more Comfort Connections episodes, visit comfortconnections.com. You can also subscribe and listen to our podcast on your favorite app. Thank you for listening and helping older adults live their best life possible.